yo, I don't think we should talk about oh, this. Come on, why not? People might misunderstand what we trying to say, you know? No, that's a part of Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that make me. Let's talk about sex. Hey guys, welcome back to Flirt. I hope that you're having a really good start to your week. As the song suggests, today I'm going to be talking about sex. And of course, this is a really taboo topic to kind of talk about. Um, I feel like in society, there's this whole thing about not talking about sex because I know, like, growing up, Unless it was like health class or with my absolute close friends, you didn't talk about it. This week I'm going to touch on two different sex subjects, which actually are sex articles that kind of go hand in hand with each other. I'm going to start off with Cosmopolitan's article on the 28 mind-blowing sex positions for lesbians that recently came out. There's a huge controversy behind it, whether it was intended to be for better or if it was actually intended for the male fantasy pleasure of what lesbians do. Granted, there are some positions when you look at these that you kind of have to question what the motive was behind it because they almost seem physically impossible unless you and your partner are flexible and unless you and your partner both have really incredible strength in either your arms or your legs. I honestly personally think that it was for good intentions um, because Cosmopolitan usually touches on a lot of sex subjects and to be honest they give really weird advice to straight couples too. Like I remember my freshman year of college I was reading this 50 ways to have better sex or something like that and I was going down the list just laughing about it with my college roommate because it just seemed absolutely absurd what some of the things were. I think that the article was truly intended to be more LGBT inclusive. I don't think they were trying to be all male fantasy, lesbian fantasy type deal. And I mean, it does cause some misguided leads to how lesbians actually do have sex. The entire concept is to have better sex or to just expand your sexual horizons. It's not saying that that is absolutely how every lesbian has sex. I mean, let's be honest here. They always focus on straight couples and not all of the readers are straight couples. But the big thing that kind of leads into my next big topic here is that a lot of these positions require like they go into such massive detail as to how you're supposed to position yourself and the thing is you have to have consent which leads me into 50 shades of gray the movie now this is a topic that I know people will highly either agree with me or disagree with me and that's okay um, I think that when it comes to Fifty Shades of Grey, it, you're completely entitled to your own opinion about the book, the movie, um, what your thoughts are about it. It's the actual subject matter that I talk about that gets me frustrated. The truth of the matter is, I personally think that Fifty Shades of Grey should have never been made into a movie. I understand. I haven't read the books. I haven't engaged much into the movie or anything but just from what I've heard about the books basically it leads me as an outside source I guess you could say to believe that there is a lot of manipulation a lot of possessiveness and a lot of BDSM relationship content if you don't know what BDSM is it's basically the dominance and submission kind of role play um, sometimes the kinky things like handcuffs can be involved, um, sometimes there's restraints involved, bondage. It's basically a role play thing. But the big thing about BDSM relationships is that it involves a lot of understanding, communication, and consent. Which 
According to what I've understood from everybody that has read the book, Shades of Grey goes beyond the perimeters of consent and talks about not consenting in a BDSM relationship, which for a movie I think is not acceptable. It's just so much easier to drag people into this concept for a movie than for a book. I think that it should be made clear to these girls younger and still learning about the dating life even as we get into young adults and into some mid years like showing this portrayal of possessiveness, manipulation, of not respecting your partner, I feel like that's going to play a big role in relationships and I'm afraid that what's going to happen is women are going to see this and think that it's perfectly okay for a man to act like that and that it's perfectly okay to be treated that way and it's not. You are not supposed to be treated that way by somebody who truly cares about you or by any type of sexual partner. If you and a partner are involved in a BDSM relationship or any sort of relationship at all, you should not be manipulated. You should not be possessed. You should be allowed to do your own thing without worrying about them breathing down your neck. And they should respect you and your body. And if you don't have a partner that can accept the communication that is brought forth before the BDSM relationship started, if you two can't communicate during, and if you can't get the person to realize your boundaries, your limits, it needs to end with that person. Because the person that you do that with should respect those boundaries and should respect your limits. And even if you at the time don't know your limits or don't know your boundaries, have a safe word. And that's part of communication. It's knowing when you've gone too far with it and your partner is no longer having fun with you. Because I can't imagine having my partner in that much agony. And I know some people feed on it and it's sick. I think I might be a little bit more biased about this because of the stuff I've endured in my life. But I personally just think that setting that aside, it's not appropriate material. Know your worth, know that you are enough, and know that you do not deserve to be treated that way. And I realize this can go both ways. It's not necessarily all straight couples that can pick this up, and that's part of the problem. I'm afraid that abusive relationships are going to start spiking because people are going to think that it's okay to treat their partner that way. Maybe I am overreacting and maybe I am thinking way too much into the movie. I'm sure it's just supposed to be for entertainment because it's a really good selling novel. I just personally can't get with the idea. I can't accept that idea and I can't support it. So that's all I have for this week. Um, I'm not going to go on too much more of a rant because I could probably go on for a while. Um, but don't forget to check out the rest of my vloggers this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Have a great rest of the week, you guys, and I'll see you next week.